Hello, this is Julie. This week we had some questions about using Serif Crest Craft Artist Pro 2 software with Make the Cut. So I thought I'd do a quick video to show you how I would do that. I'm going to use a sample decoupage project as I open this because you'll have this in your software. Decoupage is one of my favorite things to do using this software and they do have a free sample and they're free to play with. So I'll show you how I use this with Make the Cut. It's actually quite simple. You notice that there are a lot of design elements on this page. When I have a complete project, and there are lots of free projects available at Daisy Trail that you can download and then simply open in this software as, as projects like this one is. Well, each one of these design elements is selectable. Let's say that I want to use this yellow flower. I'll click on it and you notice that it's all one shape. If I want to do a 3D decoupage project with it, I want it to become multiple shapes. So to do that, I'm going to click on this heart icon at the upper right end, near the right end of the top toolbar. I'll click on that. Then I'm going to turn off the shadow angle because I don't really need shadows here. I can add shadows and make the cut. And I think I'll make this four layers so it'll add four layers on top of the ones that are there and then go to the far right on this bottom toolbar and click on convert to curves. When you do that the design now has layers that you can unstack like this. I'm clicking on the layers and just moving them up. Now I'm moving them off to the side of the page just so that I can handle them. So every dis part of the design that I want I'm going to do the same thing. I'll repeat it with let's say the pink flower. Again I'm going to click on the heart icon at the top. That's the decoupage tool. Make sure I turn off the shadow angle. I'll get four layers or you can get as many layers as you want and then click on the convert to curves and then I can drag this over here, click away from it, and then select each layer and move it away from the previous. And this will allow me to use these separate layers and make the cut as print and cut projects. Let's try another one, this bird. Again, click on the heart, turn off the shadow layer, click on convert to curves, move it over, click away and unstack the pieces. These have a very nice effect when you print them. Cut each one out and then stack them with a, a little bit of uh, dimensional tape and restack them. Gives you a dimensional project. And let's see if I wanted to do this little heart. I can do the same thing. Click the heart, click the heart at the top, turn off the shadow, click on the, I think I'll just do three layers on this, click on convert to curves, I can move it all over here, click away, and then drag the pieces one at a time away from the original. And you can continue to do this with as many of the design elements as you like. If you don't want to convert to curves or do a decoupage, but you just want the shape, you can take the shape aside and you can bring that in. Now what I'm going to do is drag around all the pieces that I want to use and make the cut. Select them. Hold a shift to get this other piece. There we go. So now I've got all the pieces selected that I want to use and make the cut. Then I'm going to go to File and Export. Export as Picture and in this window I want to make sure that I use uh, selected items and under format you want to select portable network graphics or PNG. I've got 72 DPI selected. You could use 96 but this seems to work just fine. And I'm going to click on export. And I'm going to name this 
decoupage sample, we'll call it sample one, and save to my desktop. Now I'm going to open Make the Cut and click on Pixel Trace. And I'm going to find the decoupage sample one and click on Open. Now what I want to do is click on the Alpha button, Texturize Path, and Apply Changes. And you'll see that all of the designs have come in have nice clean lines around them and I click on import finish tracing and I have all of the designs not only do I have the pictures and make the cut but I have the cutting lines around them now we can look at these by clicking on outline to see that the cutting lines are there the shadow on this ribbon um, has some extra little pieces that I might want to modify by removing the shadow um, on that and I forgot to remove the shadow on these little heart pieces. Uh, they can be erased or edited and make the cut if you like or try again. But I'm going to click on split and now I'm going to just select some of these extra marks that I don't want and I can delete those. I might have to use a break to get rid of some of them and some of them I might need to clean up a little bit more with my make the cut tools but you'll notice that these files came in pretty good over here so if you forget and leave the shadow on you'll have little things like this to deal with when you bring them in and I'm not going to worry about showing you how to clean that up because we can just go over there and get them again. So then we can just use these as print and cut projects. We add the registration marks and we'd be ready to go. Now to add your registration marks you go to file and uh, first we'll go to print preview to see what we're going to get. Well you notice that some of the design elements are off the page for the size printer that I have so I'll select all and move them over a little bit to the left. Maybe I want to resize them so that they will fit on my page and to know what size that page is I can go to file print options and show paper on mat and print registration marks and if I'm cutting this to my zing I'll do the make the cut registration marks and click OK. Now you see that there are green lines that show my paper edges and I can go to file print preview to see what it's going to look like when it's printed. Now I don't see the top registration mark. That means that this design needs to be brought down a little bit from the top so that that registration mark shows when it's print. So I'll go to print preview again and now I see registration mark there but I and I see the two registration marks but I don't see the third one so again we want to make sure that I move this over so that I can see all three registration marks so print preview there we go one up here one here and one here and one down in the bottom so I have registration marks ready to go and I can go ahead and print these to my printer then I can cut them on my zing with the registration marks lined up so that I get perfect cuts right on those cutting lines and it will cut these lines. It will print these colors and there's really not anything else I need to do if my printer and cutter are calibrated properly. If I want to cut these to my um, Pazzles view I can now select all of these and export selection to SVG and give it a name sample decoupage and save as SVG then I can open up my InView software and InView software wants to use a DPI of 72 if you're importing and also you want to use an eight and a half by eleven page if you're print doing printing cut. So I'm going to go to file, import SVG, and I'm going to uh, select. Go to my desktop where I save that, and find my sample decoupage. 
and I'm going to change this recommended 90 to 72. If I don't, they won't come in right. Click on continue, and there are the designs ready to go. Now I need to resize these in order to get them to fit, but you'll notice that they all have cutting lines around them. If I go to print preview, I see them all there, so all I need to do is add my registration marks under tools, let's see, no, under view, display registration marks. So the registration marks are showing right here. Now it, it's covering up part of the design here, which is not a good thing. So I might need to ungroup and select that item and maybe rotate it a little so it's not covering up that registration mark because the optical reader needs to be able to find it. Now these with the shadow may need to be ungrouped to see them. And we can go to print preview to see what that's going to look like. So a couple of those didn't come through so you might want to work with that a little bit. But that's how we would use it here in the InView software. Now if, we're, if we want to take these into a Cricut Design Space we would do the uh, actually all we have to do is take the original PNG files that we got right into Cricut Design Space. So we would go to Cricut.com, Cricut Design Space, create a new project, then we're going to uh, click on make sure we're logged in and then click on upload image and in this time we're going to do a basic upload and we're going to browse to that original PNG file that we had. Now the advantage of saving it as a PNG is that it comes right in with no tracing, no cleanup. I'll use complex image, continue, and continue, and save and you see that the cutting lines are right there ready to go. I'll click this image, click on insert image, and now I can resize this to whatever size that I need keeping in mind the size limits for I'm using Chrome so I can't use bigger than five and a half inches unless I'm going to cut separate colors differently but you notice over here that it has a print and cut image so I can print all these at once and then after they're printed I can go and it will get these ready to print and then it will cut around the cutting lines. So I hope this has been helpful. Have fun with your Craft Artist Pro 2 software and your cutter. I'd love to see your projects. Talk to you later. Bye.